it's always about improving men, right? And we have to take accountability when we need improvement. And I saw something just in my everyday life that I wanted to bring to your attention, Dante, where we have to do better as men, right? So here we, we went on this trip. My girl and I went on this trip with a with a, like a group, like work friends trip. They invited us up. And one of the places we're going to is a restaurant, right? And the restaurant sent, they said, here's a dress code for the restaurant. This is their dress code. Here's the dress code, Dante. Uh, the dress code requires men to have sleeved shirts no tank tops or muscle shirts, right? For the men. That's the men's dress code. Right. Women are free to wear whatever they want. Okay. <laughs> now, I think you know where I'm going with this, Dante. I, I, I um, can't imagine. Uh, when somebody issues a dress code, usually there's a reason that they have to issue the dress code is because they have to let people know that how to behave because apparently they can't do it themselves. Right. The fact that they have a dress code for men, which is not even a dress code, <laughs> if you think of because when they said dress code, I go, oh, fucking great. Here we, Here we go. go. I got to wear a jacket and a tie. I got to wear a jacket and a tie. What kind of place is it? It's nice. Okay. I mean, I have it, but you know, I don't really, you know, what is this going to cost me? Yada, yada, yada. The, it means that guys were coming in there in, in tank tops and muscle shirts to eat at a restaurant. Yeah. Right? Women, no dress code because we don't have to tell women to yeah. dress properly to be in the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. If, means, there's a, if there's a law that says don't fuck the goats. Right. Somebody was fucking the goats. Right. <laughs> somebody got, not only was somebody fucking the goats, they were fucking the goats so frequently, right? That some, we, we got to save the goats. That it needed to be addressed. <laughs> we need some, we need legal uh, uh, control. Over fucking there, the goat. Somebody was fucking the goat so much that it was a problem that it it oh. it manifested itself that it was noticeable. Right. Somebody was like, "Hey, somebody was something happened to my goats. They're not proper. There's all, something going on." Fact, all of my goats have a all problem. <laughs> but that's an indication of what men have to do better. Now I know maybe we're preaching to the choir. I don't know, but think about in your life. Being better, it's all a representation of who you are. Do you want to be the guy going to the store in flip flops? Maybe it's not even illegal, yeah, to go out in flip flops. Maybe it's not illegal. Maybe you see other people eating yeah. at the restaurant in flip flops. But do you want to be that guy? Do you want to be the guy? I think the other thing is that when you start to to care about yourself, when you ta start to care about your appearance, your hygiene, your intellect, your all of these things happen it's just just i i you know we haven't talked about this in a while i remember um when i was you know when harry and i were our, our friendship was fledgling and i took harry to my my tailor right and uh and i don't i i, I never asked you this what was your thought when i took you to my tailor like what did you think of it um i mean i i was just i I don't oh, know. Were you, thought, just like, were you just like, I oh, keeps telling me to, uh, you know, all but, right, let's see what it is. I was open to it because right, you right. were guiding me through it. So I go, well, I trust what Dante's doing. So I trust you enough to go, OK, this is, you know, I guess my worry was always financial. How about that? My worry is always like, ah, man, I hope this, this is going to cost me a lot, whatever. <laughs> and, it, and it didn't turn out to be that bad at all. And I have since found tailors in where I live. That's a little bit more affordable just because I'm in Jersey. I'm not in New York. Um, I was. Uh, but let me let me be clear. Harry will okay. not wear a pair of pants that have been. <laughs> oh, now forget it. No. Anything no. that hasn't been tailored. Just know no. this: if you see me wearing pants that haven't been tailored, just know something bad happened. <laughs> there was some accident. Something happened. I have a virus. Something. I must have either shit my pants or uh, my car broke down. And I had to change the tire and get might on my not knees. Might be your pants. They might be somebody else. They might be somebody else. Just know something happened. If you see untailored baggy like, pants, I don't on. even know that you have. I mean, do you have pants that are not tailored? <laughs> like, I don't even. Not you know that me? I would wear. Oh, no, yeah, I have right. pants that that are waiting to be tailored, or right. uh, you know, either right, I've, right. I've lost some weight or I've gained some weight or what have you. That I go, ah, I'm not wearing these right now. I'll I'll get them <laughs> fixed later. But no, there's nothing I buy off the rack that I have that I would wear. Yeah, yeah, because they're either too long or you know, I saw a guy on the street today, you know, and he actually looked pretty decent except the bottom of his things. He didn't get them tailored. Yeah. So he's literally stepping on with his heels. He's stepping on the back of his jeans. And I go, Jesus. I, I had a fur coat that I had leather pockets put in it because the gap was weighing down the coat. It was ripping the pocket in the coat. Oh, I, my goodness. 
The what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I thought you said the gap. I go, gap? No, the gap. No, no. no I, I figured it out. I pieced it together. Yeah. Leather pockets and my black. Uh, very my, good. Hey, Junior, can you do me a favor? I need something. Something need, hefty. Something that could hold, I don't know, uh, leather 7.5 pounds. <laughs> if you love what we're doing here, go to Patreon.com. It's the best way to support us and check out all the bonus content. That's right. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We do weekly bonus episodes. We do listener mail, dating tips. And also, if you love the show, you can go back to the archive starting from episode one. All the episodes will be there at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. It's what I mean. The, 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 and the, there's a feeling that you get from from dressing with some kind of intention. I think everything that you do as has has to have some intention. Um, I, I, I recently consulted with a guy who basically was saying, you know, that he, he you know, he's a funny guy, but people say he's a wise ass. And I, and I don't I don't you know, I don't um, say that you can't be a funny guy. But I think you also need to be a guy who people take seriously. And if you're just you're just a clown, you don't want to be I, you know, years ago, my nephew, my nephew, who, who we don't even talk no more because I don't to his sister or nothing. And but, but I mean, I remember saying him to him, you know, you you people you like you seem to like people laughing um, to make to be funny. I said, but do you, would you prefer to be laughed at or to be laughed with. And he was like, I don't care as long as they're laughing. I go, man, you, mm -hmm. I need to get a DNA test because I don't know how you could possibly be related to me that you, your, your whole existence is in the amusement of other people in a way that you feel as though none of it, you, you have such low self-esteem that you don't mind any attention you get as long as it's some attention. And, and that's what happens when people are in toxic relationships and toxic relationships with their parents. And so they don't even know the difference. It's just somebody look at me, somebody pay attention, somebody listen to me, somebody recognize me. And any of that is, is a, is a, is a, is respective of not having self-esteem and, and wanting that attention. Yeah. There's a there's a reason you do all that. And it's not just the appearance, you know, it's about being better. Like you said, whether it's com conversationally, whether it's bettering yourself mentally, you know, reading more things. I, I, I had to do a thing where I, I I found myself I was listening to too many wrestling and comedy podcasts. Right. Yeah. I go, I, I need to get something else in my because I'm not learning any facts that I right. can either add to my art as a comedian or just right. to have in conversation. And don't get me wrong. It's it's nice to have, you know, but you can only have so many conversations about wrestling or comedy. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I had to go, I'm going to listen to at least I'm going to fill in some stuff that, that benefits my mind a little. I'm not just going to sit here and listen to mush or just for my enjoyment. You want to find something in the middle and it takes a while, but you know, you have to think about what, what can I do to be better as a, a individually? And those <laughs> things matter. Like, you know, like I said, it's not just, no one's saying you got to wear a tuxedo every day, but Hey, I'm going to the supermarket. I'm not going to wear, you know, my, my basketball shorts with the hole in it and the, the, you know, the shirt that I used to paint the garage, yeah. you know, let me put on a polo shirt. Let me put on a decent pair of something, you know, it's just, it's about your appearance, yeah. not just to the world, but you feel better about it. It's also, I think when it's intentful, I mean, even if, if I, I have pulled off alligator shoes, ripped jeans and a tuxedo shirt, like I've pulled that off. With a re with, with like where people are like, oh, I never even because I think what happens is when you're when you're when your decisions are intentful, people can see that they're intentful. Like no nobody put that that mixture together uh without thinking about it first, without an intentful idea. <gasps> oh, excuse me, an intentful idea about how is this gonna look and and what am I trying to portray? And I think when you when you start being more intentful about what you're doing, I, I think you feel better about yourself. Um, I, I think when you're just haphazardly just taking the thing that, you know, you you see people smell the clothes because they've been wearing it so much. Well, this is still good. Pulling stuff out the hamper, these old sweats, this, that, and the other. And, and I mean, look, if you're doing work or whatever, but when you step out of the house, especially if you have self-esteem problems, you want your, the way you look on the outside, people treat you differently. People respond to you differently. They, 
they look at you differently. Um, you have to understand, and that affects you. It affects internally the way that you feel about yourself. Anybody who is being trashed or bullied or 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 being uh, disregarded, they have that feeling overwhelms them. It washes over them. And no matter how much, even when they are confident, after a while, that wears you down. And it, and it gets you to a point where you don't, where you don't like yourself anymore. You start believing the hype. It's almost like you're being brainwashed um, into this idea that you're worthless. Or that and, you don't deserve more. Hey, this is what I am. Yeah. And that, that's it. But that also goes to the idea of, you know, fixing your bed in the morning. Yeah, nobody's coming over, even if you live by yourself. Yeah. Nobody's coming here. No one's going to see it. But you're going to see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your room is a reflection of you. And, you know, you're going to see it. You're going to, and that environment also affects how you work in that environment, what you do in that environment. Yeah. How you feel in that environment. You know, it makes you feel lazier. Yeah. Sure it does. I, had, I, had, I, had, I, I was talking to a guy uh, just last week. And, and, and he was like, you know, didn't I said, well, what do you want? What do you want your life to look like? He was like, I never even thought about that. And I'm like, you, um, you know, but he was, he was, uh, 30, he was, he was a young dude, 31 years old, but he was a virgin, not a vir He wasn't a virgin, but he was in a relationship with an older woman, woman, like 10 years, his senior, but, um, he wanted to. He called me up because he was on the verge of cheating on her, right? And one of the reasons why he was cheating on her is that he well he wasn't cheating on her, but he was flirting and getting. It was, he was like, "Look, I if this opportunity opens up, he's like, I'm gonna I'm I'm going in, right?" And one of the reasons why he was going in was because he was 31 years old and he had never been with anybody else. And he goes, "Oh, my girl is great and she does so much for me." And da 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 da. -da. Right. He says, but I just, you know, and I'm like, you, you didn't live life. Right. And, and then I started, you, you didn't live life the way you wanted to. And now you're trying to make up the difference. Now, the problem is now you got a two year old and you've taken on a responsibility that you shouldn't, that you sh probably shouldn't have taken on because you weren't ready to, because you still wanted to soul wild oats. So you wanted to get out there and get some experience. And now you're in a situation where you're working at a nowhere job. You're uh, living with this in this woman's old, this older woman's house. And she's telling you, you know, because what she has done, what she's done is she's created her life the way she wants it. She wanted a child. She wanted a dude, a guy to be there. And, and from what he was saying that she's, she, she was very, you know, agreeable to him and so on and so forth. But he, he, he the, the problem is that, I, so I said to him, I said, let me ask you something. Did you hit on her or did she hit on you? She's like, she hit on me. I said, so you have a you have a, a lifestyle of wit from which that you just take what anybody gives you. You're not even really asking yourself if you if you like it or if this is what you want. You you have to be you know, I'm going to start talking about this a lot more when whenever we do podcasts and stuff. And it's, it's about being intentful. It's about making a decision because not making a decision about what you do in your life is still a decision. It's a decision not to decide. And we have to take that into consideration amongst all things, because it's literally a situation where we we're we're looking at a, a, a we're, we're, we're in a boat with no oars, you know, floating down the current with the waterfall at the end of the. <laughs> at the end of our lives because we're allowing other people's decisions to make, to, to, to guide it. And then when we end up in a situation where we finally wake up and we decide we want something different, it's too late. So but that's you, also part of the, when you play not to lose, right? Because right. you don't feel like you're, it's like when you're at a job and you want to ask the boss for a raise, but you don't want to ask him for a raise because you're afraid they'll fire you right? or they'll get rid of you. Right. And that's the same thing in relationships. You don't want to ask and demand. Meanwhile, on the other end, they have no problem making all sorts of demands. Oh, absolutely. No matter how crazy it is. Right. Even and, demands that contradict everything they already asked for. Sure. Sure. And the, 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 the minute that they find somebody understand something like a woman's loyalty is to her child. It's not to you. Um, and the minute she decides that you are not good enough or she can find something that's better she will leave you 
And understand that, that that's not that's really not personal. What you have to do is create value. You have to cre create value in any situation. And that is the only deterrent that keeps people that keeps people in the game. There's, you know, this idea about soulmates and this and that and the other. You have to create value in a relationship and maintain that value. And at any given time, somebody can decide that the value is not enough and I'm or that I can do better. And nine times out of 10, when a woman can do better, even if she can't do better, if she feels like she's your equal, I, I've said, I haven't said this in a long time, but a woman only dates a guy who she thinks is better than her. And better is a relative term. But she think, if she thinks she's better with him, it feels like she's, she's getting something out of the relationship. Now, when I say better, people get uncomfortable about that because they're like, well, better, what does better mean? Um, better means whatever she thinks it means. Whatever she needs. Whatever yeah. she desires or, or she feels is lacking in her life. So if it's not financial, like you said with Oprah, Oprah doesn't need anything from anybody yeah. financially. Right. But she needs some type of maybe emotional support. Some well, type of and emotional all, guidance. All is done and then she has to go to bed. She, she, put her, she needs somebody to put her big head on their shoulder and make it, and make it, make it okay. And if that doesn't happen then she she will all the money in the world i mean we we what's crazy about this we're watching uh, a a thing in in celebrities and and all these people like you know like you know will smith and puff daddy and you're watching all these people that we think that they've got it all figured out because they got the cars and the houses and the infinity pool and the bentleys and the private jets and stuff and none of these people are are um are, are are happy and they I mean we just went through this whole Kendrick Lamar beef. It's funny because one of the one of the um young dudes who I who I counsel very frequently, um he he was like you you you're talking about the Kendrick Lamar thing, but you got it all wrong. And he was giving me the particulars about who said what to who. And I said, no, what you don't understand is I'm not talking about the particulars of the beef. What we're talking about is a bunch of young dudes who are all sleeping with the same 40 or 50 girls. And they're all jealous of, of each other. And they're there because none of them are confident with all the money and the concerts and traveling overseas. They're still insecure in the context of their own lives and what their value is because the woman that they think is valuable, the woman who they love, the woman who they think is valuable, doesn't think that they're valuable. And because of that, they are bickering back and forth, back and forth, and you know, and this is how we end up with 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 gun beefs and stuff like that over over ass. It's crazy when when you literally are talking about guys that literally have access to maybe any of the women that they want, and, and then then it becomes it gets to a point where it's not about the women now; it's a competition. Yeah, it's right. not about it's not even about the sex anymore. Now it's like you could have sex with anyone. Now it's well, what can I do this rare? Yeah. Oh, how can, can I speak with his girl? Can I get his girl? Crazy thing. I, I, I was talking to somebody and, and, and they were telling me that, um, you know, Chris Red from SNL with uh, Keenan is now living with Keenan Thompson's wife. He's from, living with her. Living with her. They're together. You wow. know, it, it's, yeah, Keenan, they did a show. Uh, I know a little bit about this where Chris Red was and Keenan were on SNL together. Chris Red is kind of, was kind of newer. Then they did a show together. Chris Red was on Keenan's show, the Keenan Thompson show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after Keenan gets divorced, Chris Red starts dating his his girl. Yeah. And um, you remember he got somebody ran up on wow. him because we all speculated that he somebody ran up and then bust his bust. Yeah. His not long after that, somebody <laughs> ran up and uh, knocked Chris Red out. Yeah. Uh, in a neighborhood where really no one really gets knocked out for their chain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, it doesn't happen out there. Chain, it wasn't even a chain. I heard it was for, I don't know, maybe that's how, I'm, you know I, how these things get yeah. passed down and then now it becomes uh, someone well, not literally a guy who go. it's almost like a, 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 a you know, a, a feather in my cap because I am now smashing his wife, which is, yeah. it's just, where is the integrity, the credibility of that? It's just like, uh, and let's not really that, I mean, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but she wasn't really as hot. I mean, all right. She's all right. But it might have been the, the temptation of the, the situation. It's like when people sleep with their, you know, you're sleeping with your, your best friend's girl. Like, what are you doing? 
Yeah. What yeah. is it? The story, the temptation. What do you do? There's other women in the world. The one up. It's the it's, it the one up. Let me. It take, just becomes something rare. The ego trip. Oh man, I was so good. I was able to take this woman from from her husband. Yeah. I was able to get something that's very rare. And and it's an ego trip. And you're right. It ends. It ends with these battles now. This these diss tracks that are coming out and are damaging everybody involved. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like I mean, it's great for the for the industry because it's it's hyped it up, but it's but we find this. I mean, Doug, it's this this idea of this hyper materialism that becomes the most important thing. How much money you got? What kind of car you driving? And and none of those dudes are happy. I mean, I, I one of the dudes. I'm a I, I love uh uh Kurt Cobain. I love grunge. Um, sure. Fun fact. Um, oh. And this dude ended up with a gun in his mouth. Put a gun in, changed the face of rock music, created a whole genre of rock music, and with all of that success and that creative energy, put a gun in his in his mouth and blew his head. I, you know, and I'm not saying it's just those things that alone, but what I'm saying is that the when you are authentic, when you are credible, when you are empathetic, I've said this a hundred times, you cannot be a better human being. You, there's there's no way if you practice those principles in in excess you cannot be a better human being and what i've it, over and over again any situation that i see that happens over and over again there's a situation where it always refers back to one's ability not to be honest one's ability not to show up and do what they say they're going to do or one's ability not to understand that other people go through things that you haven't and that to, to have some kind of empathy and some openness to see that people go through some different stuff that they've that that you've never been through. So there's a couple of things that you take away when you're talking about the celebrities. One of the things you can take away, which is beautiful for everybody listening, you don't need fame or fortune to be happy. No, because these people have that and it didn't make them happy because not happy ironically, the same work that you have to do to be happy as somebody who's poor is the same work you need to do as a person who's famous and rich. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't change. It's just different stakes because those people have everything, but it, it's different stakes. It's about integrity, right? It's about, you know, how you view things mentally, how you get up, how happy you are with what you have, you know, and trying to be positive. So that's the positive message of it is that you don't have to be famous to be happy. You don't have to be really rich to be happy. You can work on that right now. If you got two dimes, you can work on that right now. Two dimes, I don't mean two women. And you I mean be, literally and, two and, dimes. And, and I think you have to be, yeah, you mean two dimes. Like, yeah, yeah, two dime pieces. Yeah, yeah but but it, it's being intentful. It's actually deciding that I, I think this is what I want. And how do I, and then you, once you understand where you are, your current location and what the destination is, then you can start working towards that. And just simply, if you're in a rut and you're depressed and stuff like that, just you working to get to that goal, even if you don't get there, the simple fact of when you start to actively and intentfully take action into reaching those goals changes your whole perspective. And the so, other the other thing you can take from this is that when you are always righteous, when you're telling the truth, you feel lighter. You yeah. feel there's less stress. Uh, and and I say that meaning I don't expect people out here to. I don't think we're listening. Uh, we we're we're broadcasting to a bunch of liars. Right. I know that we have. We're generally we're broadcasting to people who want to be better. Right. Yeah. But even the small things, like uh, take for example, you know, in past relationships, like if I got the day off from work, I wouldn't tell my girlfriend that I have the day off from work. I'd be yeah. like, I want to keep this to myself so I don't have to answer calls or chat with her. And But then you have to worry about like, well, what if she finds out by mistake? What if I make a mistake and she finds out and blah, blah. And now as a human being, years later, what I do is I just go, hey, I got the day off from work, but I'm going to focus on these other things. So yes. if you don't hear from me, that's why, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't really want to chat or whatever. If she And then you can immerse yourself in the things that you want to immerse. But you don't have to feel that, like, pressure of running around. Those are small things that we do in a relationship or, or dealing with your family and tell them, I don't like this. And it feels uncomfortable at first, but in the long run, it is lighter. You feel lighter because you don't feel like a fraud if somebody catches you. Yeah. And understand, people don't do, people do what they want to do. So when they're not doing it, it's because they don't want to do it. So... Male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.